welcome to the third video on getting Phantom set up. And this is the one that gets me every time. It never seems to run seamless. Of course, to be fair, last one didn't run perfectly, but we got most of it working. Went through pretty well. Just a, a mistake on my part on switching my apps. The, for this one to work, the biggest thing we're going to need to make sure we get done is we set these roles up in the previous video to give admin the rights. Now we need to create a user account that Phantom is going to use specifically for writing its logs to, uh, to Splunk. And so we need to go create two new users and there's this Phantom delete and this Phantom search and they're going to need those rights. And so we'll do that by going to settings, users. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it Phantom Search. Well, actually, I'll do Phantom Write, and we'll leave that alone. No email address. I'll set up a password. Set up my time zone. We're going to, and then we're going to give it the phantom. So it's phantom search. So let's call it phantom search. Keep it really simple. Phantom search. It doesn't need the user rights. I have found often I have to give the admin right here. We will see if I can get away from giving it phantom, uh, giving it admin rights, but often we're going to get errors if I don't. And so uh, let's let's go with that. Hit save, and then I'm going to create another user, and this one's going to be the phantom delete, and that will be phantom, and they'll have that right. Remove that, give it a new password. We, I think I messed up. I, I think I'm requiring a password change. We definitely don't want that. And this one definitely almost always needs the admin right. But we're just going to stay away from that for right now. Hit save. And let's go. All right, so it's not grantable. So what we'll do is we'll give them admin right. And then we will give admin the right to go phantom delete. I do not understand why that's the way it is, but it is what we have to do. So I acknowledge that they're, they've got those rights. We hit save and we go phantom search. Let's flip this off, require password change. Okay, that was turned off. All right, if we have this correct, we now come back here. I'm gonna go to roles, settings, roles. And I'm gonna need to make sure my admin has the ability to do phantom delete. I acknowledge. Hit save. Now I have set up my users. I have a phantom delete user and a phantom search user. And the phantom search has the phantom search ability. The phantom delete could not be assigned phantom delete. But if I assign the admin role to have phantom delete, then I assign the admin role, I can bypass that. So we're good there. I'm going to come back to SOAR. We're going to come in here and we're going to do we're still we're not we're not ready yet we're gonna go to administration there's still one more piece we have to set up we need to get a hex code but we'll we'll cover each piece as we come upon it uh, product settings let's see is it under administration settings event settings nope where do we have that under search settings my bad uh, right there we'll come we can send stuff to an elastic search we can do a distributed Splunk environment external Splunk instance embedded right now by default it's putting all of its stuff embedded I want it to a external environment if you have a an index cluster you can use this and put all of your indexers all your search heads I just have one so it's relatively simple and my host will be username, and that is where I'll put 
This is the user with search permission, so that is uh, phantom search. And then the user with delete rights is phantom delete. We can check that, make sure it's right. Phantom user, phantom delete, phantom search, perfect. All right, we're gonna come here. We're gonna go down to settings and we're gonna go data inputs. We need to get a hex key and you can see this by the fact that we're going to use the REST port and the HTTP event collector. And so I'm gonna to need to make sure that my port 8088 and port 8089 are open on the firewall, if you have a firewall blocking them. And you'll also need to make sure that you have a hex key which you'll put here, your tokens that you can actually get on. Let's actually put a password. Make sure I type those right. Okay, now I've got my data inputs and there is, so I went settings, data inputs. Now I wanna do an HTTP event collection, collector so we'll come in here. I'm gonna come into the main thing. You can hit the add new, but there are some other settings. If you don't have hex set up, you need to set it up. And you'll notice I got a red mark here saying, hey, they're all disabled, hex is disabled. So we're gonna come into global settings and I'm gonna click enable. Um, I'm gonna leave the rest of the stuff alone. By default, it's using port 8088. So I'm gonna to need to go check that my 8088 is open, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here now. I'll jump over and UFW status. I don't know if I can check this with this user. Yep, so I'm gonna back into here. My, my firewall is off, so I don't have to worry, but otherwise I would need to get that fixed. Back to Splunk. All right, so my ADA is open now that little red arrow has gone away. If you didn't do that, nothing you do will matter because your uh, heck is disabled by default. So we're gonna make a new token and I'm gonna call this SOAR collection. Uh, I don't need to override anything. I'm fine with the way that's written. And then I'm gonna go, we'll leave it at automatic. And then it will tell you that you need to go load in a bunch of indexes. And unfortunately, I don't have those. So in order to make that work, we can come back to the Splunk app and it says create indexes required for SOAR and system SOAR logs. And I'm probably gonna get told, eh, can't do that because this is a search head and we don't create indexes on search heads. If this was your, well, your indexer, it wouldn't cause any issues. But this will tell me these are the indexes you want you wanna create and hopefully it'll let me, but I'm expecting a big eh. Yep, there was an error, you're not an indexer, the rest can only be made from the indexer. And so I will not have those added in here. And so I'm going to need to create all of those indexes. What an absolute pain, and my recommendation, I will have a indexer.com page for you. Feel free to, uh, I'll reference it down below and you can just grab those indexes.com for yourself and make them work. Um, anyway, so I will, uh, I'm will. i gonna pause the video as I go put them all in and I'll show you how I can do it with an indexes.com page. All right, so let's return back. I've got the, uh, the indexes done, easiest way to see them. I actually just put them in my Etsy system local if we do a listing, you can see indexes.com. If I buy that, there they all are. The thing is, this is, on my, this is on my search head, so it really doesn't matter. All it is is just making it so the pop, the it's not actually going to index there because I'm forwarding all the logs off. Uh, I've set forwarding on this so a search head doesn't actually index, so these sizes are irrelevant. I just needed it so the, the GUI would work when I pick all the apps, the indexes to use. And I'll show that now. Now that I've got this working, you click next. This is, oh, by the way, if I didn't make that clear, look in the link below. I'll point out a location where you can download an already pre-done index.com so you can put it anywhere you need to. Uh, copy and paste them if you're in the if you ran the same issue I did. If you're running this app on your indexer, it's not an issue because the indexer will have all the indexes there. 
or it will that little app will create the indexes on your indexer but since I'm using a search head to do this it causes a little bit of a problem just a standalone search head so anyway when I hit next now if I come down notice I have all these logs that weren't there before and so I'm just going to select them all want action run app app run artifact asset container and it wants this last I missed OS somewhere there's OS so we grab all those those are the indexes it wants you know it from the list again if I hit this uh, create indexes create indexes these are the ones they want added in there gotta go you have to select them all but it's all right and then you can have your default index that doesn't really matter it'll take care of itself there hit review and it will uh, I'm set up. It's going to use a token. So our collection, these are the apps it's going to use. And if I hit submit, I now have a token. And just in case you lose that token, I'm going to put it, I'm going to paste it into my clipboard. But in case you lose it, you go to data inputs, go to your HTTP event collection. Again, always make sure that red bar is gone, global settings, that it's enabled. And if you come click here, there's your token. So I'm going to grab that token. And I'm going to come down here and paste it. And so this is 8089, 8088. And if I'm lucky, I always forget how this has to be written. It should be fine. Um, anyway, I'm pointing to 119. Yep. And if I test connection, I have failed. All right, I'm going to play this for a little bit and come back. All right, I don't really know what to say here. I have spent the last hour trying to debug this thing. Um, I've got my, I made, here's my address. Make sure to use, it didn't like, for some reason, phantom underscore search. It wanted phantom delete. I changed that and I kept getting errors here. It kept telling me wouldn't work, wouldn't work, wouldn't work, wouldn't work. And then just out of the blue, I just looked over to my search head and it told me, hey, you're missing some uh, indexes. They were there, but um, anyway, it it started indexing. And why? I have no idea. It It's still telling me errors and then I end up uh, testing again with a uh, run this action here, re-index, and they started coming across. You know what? I hope you don't run into these problems. I, uh, if you do, feel free to reach out to be on Discord. I'll give you the best shots. I'll tell you everything I poked at. Um, it was, honestly, I wish I could say there was just one thing, but I have found this thing to be very problematic. You basically, I've even worked with Splunk Pro for services and they'll joke around with me saying, you basically need to do some sort of r ritual, um, step, uh, spin three times, do the hokey pokey and pray to something and maybe you can get it to work. Anyway, it's working now. My stuff's indexing. Um, it's been very frustrating and I wish I could say what specifically I did. One thing I made sure, check these text boxes. You want them tested, check, tested, checked. Anyway, and that gets my, my logs coming over. Uh, and my future videos will show why that's so important that you get those. But anyway, I hope this helps you uh, get your uh, phantom going and helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.